Welcome to Worship Today Online at Emmanuel United Methodist Church. My name is Ben Morris. I serve here as the pastor, and I'm so grateful that you have found us for worship today. Whether Emmanuel has been your church home for a long time, or you're with us for the first time, looking for a good word of hope from the God that loves you so much. We'd love to know who's with us in worship today. In the comments of our video on YouTube, there's a link to our website called a welcome card. It's just a way for folks to check in so we know who's in worship today. Also in our comments is another link to our website called a prayer card. If we can be in prayer for you this week, please let us know. Friends, we're in the third week of our series on stewardship using a book by pastor and author Adam Hamilton called Enough, Discovering Joy Through Simplicity and Generosity. And so far, we've really heard some, some powerful things in these first few weeks. The first week, we talked about how the world tries to distort our image, pulling us in so many different directions, tempting us with things that we, we don't need, inviting us to take more than we have or, or need or want, maybe putting our lives unnecessarily at risk. And the second week, we heard the invitation from God to live out our life and calling. The opposite of those temptations is to participate with God's blessings in the kingdom of God, in the footsteps of Jesus to love and serve. We continue down that path, friends, today as we hear from the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Philippians as he talks about the secret of contentment not about having a full belly after a big holiday meal like we might feel coming up in a few weeks or, or not getting that Amazon package right on the day that we were hoping for. But he talks about contentment because of what God in Christ has done for us. And that being our contentment that we cannot find anywhere else. I'm so glad that you are with us as we continue this journey together. Will you pray with me over our worship? God, we are so grateful for your love for us, a contentment that we can find no other place. We're here to hear a word from you today, God, and we ask your blessing upon the gifts that make our, our worship possible for our music team, our editing team. Come Holy Spirit, as we listen for you. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen.
we come to our time, friends, of All Saints candle lighting. The founder of our Methodist movement, John Wesley, said that all those who lead a Christian life are ones that we should remember and recognize as a saint. It's why that we don't really celebrate saints in the same way as other traditions. And I appreciate our prayer of confession today, naming us as saints in process, continuing to be perfected in, in love as those who went on before us. And so every year on this All Saints Sunday, we pause and remember those who we lost between this All Saints Sunday and the one before. We light a candle and we read those names aloud. So as the names are read, I'd like to invite forward any family members who would like to, to come and, and light a candle this morning. Carol Kuzman. Nancy Olson. Thomas also. Those were the folks we had on our list, friends, just based upon checking our rest records and, and having conversations. If there was anyone we forgot, we apologize and, and would invite anyone uh, to, to speak a name aloud. Otherwise, we have just a few extras to light for those in our hearts, not just for this year, but any other years, those saints that were such an impact upon our lives. Thank you very much to the families for being present today. I'd like to offer a prayer, and then uh, Vernon and Lynn have a special music to offer today. Let's pray. God, we are so grateful for these candles we light, these names we read aloud, ways to remember the gift of life you have given, how they have touched each one of us so much, Help us to remember these lives, not just today, but every day. How these saints have been such a gift and importance to us. We thank you so much. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen.
Corden and I would like to dedicate this song to the memory of those in whose memory the uh, uh, candles were lit this morning. I read a little bit about the story of this song. Albert Brumley is the author, and he reports that this song, the words and the music came to him when he was working in a cotton field. And I could just picture him working in that cotton field. If I were there, my back would be breaking. It would be sore, it would be hot, I'd be sweating. My hands would be sore and bloody. And all of a sudden, I would think about something that I read in the Bible. In commemoration for those who have gone before us, the saints, it brings to mind a, a hymn I sang as a young man. In 1 Corinthians, it speaks of victory over death. I will show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but be changed immediately in a moment and in a twinkling of an eye. Thank you for all of the ways you share time and talent and financial gift through the ministries of Emmanuel Church. It was another busy Wednesday night this week where we welcomed about 60 people to our dinner church. Everyone was welcomed and, and given a name tag, greeted. We had uh, a time where we sang happy birthday to, to many people that maybe have not known each other across the years, but now they do. We're creating a community here. Shared prayer, joys, and concerns had a time where we shared a, a Jesus story from the gospel at the end of our, our meal where we have dessert. We always say that sometimes we think dessert is the best part of the meal, but we express to our, our new friends that we think Jesus is the best part of every time we come together. 
And this was a special Wednesday in the life of what we do down in the kitchen because we fed not just these 60 odd folks that were coming for the community meal, the dinner church meal, but another 26 were fed at the Cots shelter. At about 4, 4.30, uh, we prepared uh, some big pans of, of really delicious food that I know I would have been happy to eat <laughs> to our neighbors over on uh, South River. So thank you, friends, for how you help to make this type of ministry possible, sharing what we have out in the community and creating community right here in the walls of our church as well. God is doing such amazing things right now. Thank you for how you are a part of it with your time and your talent and your financial gifts. Whether you're with us in person from time to time and you're able to share that in the offering plate or you send gifts through the mail, I use our online giving, which is available on our website, emmanuel-umc.org, and you hit the Give Online tab and there's instructions on how to use the Vanco uh, system there. Or you can download the Vanco mobile app for your smartphone or your tablet. Let us pray. God, we are so grateful for the amazing things that you are doing during this season and how we have the opportunity to be a part of it with our time and our talent and financial gifts. We ask your continued blessings on all that is shared this week that we might see a sign of your Son, the Christ, among us. In his name we pray. Amen. Our scripture today, as we continue our stewardship series, is from Philippians, the fourth chapter. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me but had no opportunity to show it. Now that I am referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry, of having plenty and of being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I should probably get a new coat. I have a few different winter coats, different coats with different levels of thickness, for lack of a better term. I have a good heavy winter coat for the days when the wind is whipping and it's 10 degrees, those January, February, Wisconsin winter days. But I also have one that is slightly less thick for those walks on those 35 to 40 degree days like we've been having this weekend here in Wisconsin. It's more like a fleece lined heavy jacket. It was a free coat that I was given a few years ago when I was working at the insurance agency. Not only did it have the name of our office on it, it also has the name of an insurance company on it that was bought out. So not only does it have the name of a place that I no longer work for, it has the name of a company that no longer exists. <laughs> So, I should probably get a new coat, but this one is still warm enough, and the zipper still works, and it serves its purpose as a jacket for walks on those occasional nice fall or winter days. I could get a new coat, but I don't really need it. There is value, friends, in being content with what we have but we are often pulled to find contentment elsewhere. That's what we have been hearing in some of our series and continue to hear in our series this week, Enough, Discovering Joy in Simplicity and Generosity. That the world continually tells us that our lives consist in the abundance of possessions. We are bombarded with messages such as, if you had just a little bit more, you'd be happier, you would be content. If I had this thing that I don't currently have, I'd, I'd have more satisfaction. If I had a bigger house, 
if I had a nicer car, if I had more fashionable clothes, if I had another coat that doesn't have a, a name of a former employer on it, I'd be a little more happier than I am right now. We had a really great discussion this past week in one of our Bible studies about how this kind of thing has always been with us, friends, this pull to want things now and find contentment in possessions. But we live in a culture that celebrates it. Instead of hearing the call to discipline ourselves and simplify, what we often hear is, get this thing to take care of yourself. This purchase will make you happy. You deserve it. This is how you will find contentment. Well, this week, as we continue our stewardship series in the book, Enough, Discovering Joy Through Simplicity and Gen Generosity, pastor and author Adam Hamilton talks about this issue of contentment, how it is important that we find it, but in the right places. We hear that message in our scripture in Philippians today. As the Apostle Paul writes to the church, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last, you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I've learned to be content whatever the circumstances. The Apostle Paul writes to the church, from what we might call less than ideal circumstances, friends. If we were to trace back to chapter 1 of, of this book of Philippians, it starts with his prayer for them and his purpose for the letter. And then he casually mentions how he was able to share the gospel with an imperial guard because he was in prison. And then I think he only mentioned it three more times over the course of the next seven verses. Did I mention I was in prison <laughs> in that first chapter? I'm in prison. But these verses we hear today, friends, come at the end of the familiar refrain that we often hear in, in chapter 4 of Philippians, where he writes, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And where does Paul say these things from? From prison. Because he is saying, I have learned to be content in all circumstances. Paul continues with these words because he has learned the secret of contentment. Not about being well-fed or being hungry. Not about having plenty or about being in need because he is not defined by his worldly possessions, not how about, about how much or how less that he has. That is not the source of his contentment. Paul's contentment is of a very different kind, friends. It arises from Paul's decision to give up everything in order to gain Christ Jesus. He can cope and live and dwell in any circumstance. He knows how to have plenty, to be in little or in need because of all that God has done. He rejoices in every circumstance because of the good news of Jesus Christ. I appreciate the message translation from Eugene Peterson from these verses in Philippians 4, our reading for today. Actually, I don't have a sense of needing anything personally. I've learned by now to be quite content whatever my circumstances. I'm just as happy 
with little as much, with much as little. I found the recipe for being happy, whether full or hungry, hands full or hands empty. Whatever I have, wherever I am, I can make it through anything in the one who makes me who I am. Paul's not referring to superficial cheerfulness. His contentment is not about his bank account or how much food he has on the table or his living situation. Did we mention he's in prison? Paul's contentment is rooted in deep joy in what God has done in Christ Jesus. Paul is not thinking about something that's merely an emotional experience, but the deep and lasting joy because of a relationship with Christ. The God who gave so much, loved us so much, who would come down and walk among us. The God who would meet us in death and the God who would show us life. The God of the resurrection who brings us into life again. That is where Paul finds his contentment. But Paul also knows that contentment is not just knowing it. But contentment is living it. We're invited to know this same contentment, friends, not to depend on our possessions, to be content with moment to moment of, of how much we have, but living it. Now, there is a certain discontent that God intended us to have. We should not be content with the, the brokenness of the world. We should not be content with racial or, or gender inequality. We should not be content with those who suffer poverty or homelessness around us. God wired us so that we would not be content with certain things, so that we would seek the only one who would fully satisfy us. We're meant to have some discontent within us. We are meant to yearn for a relationship with God, to cultivate a deeper prayer life, to pursue justice, pursue holiness, to love others more, to grow in grace and wisdom each day so that we would find our contentment in God. In the Enough book, Adam Hamilton prescribes four ways to cultivate contentment. I wanted to focus on two during our time together and invite you to, to find some time with us in the Bible studies. We'll focus on the other two. But in relation to stewardship, I wanted to focus on two things that he talks about in the book. It's so hard how the culture pulls us, friends, to focus on things and ask us, well, won't this make you happy? And that's one of the first things that he invites us to ask. How long will this make us happy when we're thinking about buying something? Will it make us happy? Sometimes we get something and, and the only happiness it lasts is how long it takes us to get us out of the box. There's that moment when we make the purchase and that satisfaction does not even last by the time we receive it. I was reading an article related to this kind of thing this week and, and the, the writer had a suggestion that she was using to try to discipline herself while making online purchases. This person would screenshot something that they thought they wanted to buy and keep that picture on their phone. And they would look at it for a few days, three to four days, and then see if they still wanted to buy it. After three, four, five days, is that desire still there? Is it something I need? Do I think I will still find my contentment there? Paul's contentment was not dependent moment to moment of what might come. I've learned by now to be quite content, whatever my circumstances. 
because of God's overwhelming grace. And the second one I wanted to focus on of these four that Adam Hamilton writes about in the book, friends, is to develop a grateful heart. Gratitude is essential if we are to be content. As Paul writes in 1 Thessalonians, if we are to give thanks in all circumstances, in the same way he is content in all circumstances, a grateful heart recognizes that all of life is a gift. Contentment comes when we spend more time giving thanks for what we have than thinking about what's missing or what's wrong in our lives. Instead of thinking about what we're looking for, what if we spent more time giving thanks for what God has done for us, giving thanks for our families, our community, giving God thanks for the opportunity to, to serve with the gifts that God has given us. Choosing contentment means that we look to God as our source for all that we have and giving thanks. It means that we ask God to help give us the right perspective on our money and our possessions and ask God to continue to help us to change our hearts each day. Let us pray. God, we do give you great thanks and praise. The one that made us, the Christ who saves us, the Holy Spirit who sustains us. We ask you to help continue to hear this message of contentment. What it means for each one of us to know that we are a child of God and we do not need to find our worth anywhere else, God. We might feel that there are some days that there is something missing in our lives, God, but we know that is just the world lying to us. Our worth, our value is grounded in your abundant grace for each one of us. And we give you thanks and praise in the name of Christ. Amen.
Thank you for joining us for Worship Online today at Emmanuel Church. So good to be with you. We have several opportunities to continue our conversation during this Enough Stewardship series. Our neighbors at St. James have a Bible study time 2 p.m. on Wednesday afternoons. Also on Wednesdays here at Emmanuel Church, uh, following the meal, we have uh, dinner at 5.30, followed by a uh, fellowship a Bible study at 6.15 and when, uh, Sunday mornings, pardon me, at 8.45, just before worship. So all of those times about the same. Sometimes I'll be leading, sometimes some folks uh, from the church, but different ways to continue conversation and fellowship about what contentment means, what it means to love and serve and offer what God has for us. Hope you can find a time to connect, friends. And thank you so much for being with us today. Good to be in relationship with you as we go forth. May the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.